I'll walk you through the outside of the Lux Gold. Um, this is your trailer, so we're gonna walk around it, give you a tour of it, and show you how to use things. Um, so right here you have just a standard cargo bay. It's really small. Um, not really much to see there, just a small little bay. Uh, down here, you have your uh, spare tire rack. Uh, as you can see, there's a cotter pin above there. You pull the cotter pin, lift up and pull out and it'll drop your spare tire for you. Uh, right next to it, to the left there, you have your uh, outside grill hookup for any outside LP appliances you wanna use. And we'll go over here to the uh, outside entertainment center. Uh, you got your TV here. Uh, the TV is connected to the stereo, which has the speakers right next to the TV there. Uh, that's also Bluetooth, so you can play music from your phone or uh, iPad or whatnot. Uh, outside reset there, GFI protected. Um, Close that up. And we'll come over here. We have two furnaces here. These are the outside covers. Um, outside recep, also GFI protected. Uh, outside stereo, uh, that's really nice. You have two speakers up above here for that. Uh, you press the Jensen button on the top, it turns it on and then you go through the modes. You can either use AM, FM, or Bluetooth, or if you have an SD card, you can put that in there and use that on the back side. Uh, down here, you have two little white eggs. Uh, those are for your wind sensors. Uh, there's two wireless remotes here as well for your awnings. Uh, there's little round, uh, on and off buttons underneath there. Uh, when you're traveling, those need to be in the off position uh, just so it's a protective mode so that your slide out, or not your slide outs, your awnings uh, don't go in and out sensing the vibration of going down the road. So you wanna make sure those are off when you're uh, going down the road. Uh, back there in the corner is your main in-command ASA board. Uh, that one does all your motorized functions and four light groups. Uh, also controls your generator. Uh, if you didn't have wind sensors, your awning would be on there. Um, and your awning lights. Uh, but with the wind sensors, your awning lights are on the eggs. So it doesn't control that. But it controls your slide outs and your water pump. Uh, all the things that are mechanical. And then you have your slide tray here. Uh, with this, if you pull up on this, and this will come out this way, but when you push it back in, it will not go through to the other side. It locks in place. And then on the other side, there will be a lever like this as well, and you can pull it to go the other way but it won't allow it to come back this way unless you pull that lever on this side. And here's a 40 pound LP tank. Uh, this is one of two. And then you have your uh, regulator back there in the back. In the position that it's in now, it is set up to pull LP from this tank on this side. If you roll that all the way to the other side, uh, it'll pull from the other tank. If it's straight up and down, then it balances the two tanks out, which personally I don't recommend because uh, once you're out of propane at that point, you're out of propane. So now we'll go down to the generator area. So you have your generator here and up above it, you have a rack that has your uh, transfer switch to the left and your inverter uh, right here to the right. Over here, this disconnect right here is for your inverter. 
which goes to your refrigerator. Uh, if you're traveling down the road, you'll want to have this in the on position like it is now. If you uh, are storing it and you don't have power going to the coach and uh, you don't need the refrigerator going, you would turn this off and then unplug the coach. That'll turn the power off to the refrigerator. Um, but generally, you'll just leave that on and you won't need to do anything else with it if you're staying in the trailer all year round. Uh, this disconnect here is for your main 12 volt inside the coach. Uh, when you're traveling, you'll want to turn that one off. And when you're at a campsite, you'll want to have that one on. Uh, above it, you just have a standard light switch just for the little bay here so you can see inside there. You have your brake hydraulic reservoir here and this reservoir here is for your jacks and your battery compartment here as well. All right, so this is your equalizer jack system. Uh, this is a really nice system. With this, all you have to do to level the coach out is turn the power on, wait for the lights to go off over here, press all retract, and then once it is done beeping, then you would press auto level and it'll automatically level the coach out uh, and get it really, really close. Um, might need to tweak it just a little bit, but then you turn the power off and just close up the compartment. Uh, inside here is your other uh, 40 pound LP cylinder. Um, it's got the shut off valve on the top, but that's really all there is in there. Uh, down here, uh, you notice the camera on your clearance light there. Uh, that's part of your backup camera system. Uh, those are a really nice system. And the way we set up those here uh, doubles as a uh, security system and a backup camera system. So when you're in the coach, you can actually see what's going on pretty much all the way around your coach. So now we're gonna go over the wet bay here. Um, you have your dump valves for your gray tanks and your dump valves for your black tanks. Uh, your black tanks also have a flush. So after you dump them, you would hook up a water hose to each of these and make sure your tanks are closed and put some extra water in there and then open your tanks back up so that it flushes the black tank completely out. And then you would use your gray tank flush to flush the line out completely. Um, if you wanna winterize the coach, uh, right here is a hookup for a water hose. That there, in order to do that, you would turn this to winterize and you would turn your pump on inside and you would put this hose into a container of antifreeze and it would pull the antifreeze into the coach and winterize the, the coach that way. Um, when you're hooking up to city water, you would hook up right here where we have this hose hooked up and you would have this on city. Uh, if you're wanting to fill your tank, you would just switch this over to tank, fill the tank up and then put it back on city. And then if you wanna pull from your tank when you're dry camping, you would just turn your pump on on the inside. If you leave this on tank, you'll get uh, air pulled into your water lines, which can cause your faucets to spit at you, uh, spitting air and uh, causing water to go all over the place. You have an outside shower here with both hot and cold water. And the hose is in the cargo area for you to hook that up as well. So we're gonna go to the water heater now. Uh, the water heater is a Truma on-demand uh, gas water heater. Um, 
You'll want to make sure this is on. It doesn't matter which way because you have a controller on the inside. So all this switch is doing is turning power on uh, to the water heater. Um, other than that, uh, if you go to winterize, you would pull this, you push up on this little tab here, pull this down when there's no pressure on the system. And there's a filter screen back in here that you pull out and that allows you to make sure no water gets built up in there for the winter. All right. Uh, your main dump valve is right down here. Uh, before you start dumping from the wet bay, you'll want to hook up your hose and then pull the uh, dump valve down here and then start dumping from up in the wet bay area. Uh, underneath the coach, there is a blue water line sticking down with a shutoff valve. And that is your drain for your uh, fresh water tank. And I believe on this coach, it's easier to see it from back here. Yeah, it's right there next to that jack. And if you open that shutoff valve, it'll dump your fresh tank out. It takes a little while because it's a small line, but uh, it's nice to have it there if you plan on winterizing the coach. And then right here you have your uh, power reel. Uh, that's really simple to use. You just press the retract button and then guide this back and forth as it pulls the wire in. And then when you get to your campsite, you would pull this wire out, just pull it. You don't have to press a button or anything and it'll come out as far as you need it to. Uh, your ladder on, on the back of the coach to get on the roof. So we'll go ahead and go on the inside and go over the in-command system. Okay, so with the in-command system, you have three buttons on the bottom of this screen. You can press any one of them to get the screen to pop up. Uh, right now, we'll go over the generator setting, so you can open that up. Uh, you can prime or start the generator from right here. And then if you press the manual button, uh, it says for best performance, only use one AC and minimal DC devices. Uh, if you dismiss that, it puts the generator on automatic. And what that does is if you're out in the middle of nowhere running off your batteries, if your batteries get below 11.8 volts, the generator will automatically start for one hour and charge your batteries up. That's a really nice feature to have because you don't have to worry about your batteries going dead. So now we're gonna go back. You can either press the home or the back key and it'll take you back to the main screen. Uh, awnings will not pertain to you because you have the, the wind sensors. Um, slide outs. Uh, each one of the slide outs are labeled. Uh, you have in and out. You have to press and hold whichever direction you want them to go. And so we go back, go to lights. Uh, all the light groups are labeled. So your half bath ceiling lights, your half bath accent and your hallway. Those are just on and off. And you just press them and turn them on and off. And then everything from the closet down uh, has a brightness control so you can brighten or dim your lights down to what you want and you would just scroll down to the next page to get to whatever lights you're wanting from here okay so we'll go back to the home screen um, triggers that one, you don't have a ceiling fan on this coach, so it, it wouldn't pertain to you. The HVAC, uh, you have zone one, zone two, and that would be it. So you have 
controls here for that. Um, the vent down below, uh, that doesn't pertain to us. We use the fantastic fan controllers. Um, to turn the fan on for the ACs, you would just click that mode one time. You click it again, it goes to cool. And then you would set your temperature with an auto fan and it would maintain that temperature pretty well for you. Uh, same thing with the electric heat pump. You would switch the source to electric and have it on heat, set your temperature, and it'll keep that temperature for you. Um, and then the auto function for the mode, we don't really recommend because that's, uh, the system kind of battles itself because it'll heat it up a little too much and then it'll cool itself off too much and it'll just bounce back and forth through that. Um, go back to the home screen. The water pump you can turn on right here on the main screen and you can turn it off there. Interior lights is a master button. Uh, you can turn all the lights on or off. Uh, exterior lights and security lights are the same thing. You can control those right there. Uh, the exclamation point, if you press and hold that, uh, it turns on like a panic mode and it'll flash the lights on the inside and on the outside of the coach to draw attention to your trailer. Um, and then your basic light switches are throughout the coach. Um, you just press it. Uh, if you press and hold it, then it will not function properly. So it's uh, something you got to get used to. Uh, they always spring back to the middle, but they should always function just as well as a regular switch. All right. Uh, on the other side here, we're going to open this up. There's a main control panel here. Uh, you have your C level, which monitors your battery level, uh, matters, uh, monitors your fresh tank and your two gray tanks and your black tank. Uh, monitors all of that from uh, right here as well as the ASA has the monitor at the top of it. Uh, you have manual awning controls right here so you don't have to get down into the cargo area to get your uh, wireless remotes. Uh, this camera switch here turns on and off your cameras, but that doesn't matter during travel because the way we've set it up, it's separate from the clearance lights on your vehicle. So um, most customers just leave that on and then it leaves their cameras on. But if you're going away for a weekend or whatnot, then it's recommended to turn that off and save the cameras as much as possible. Uh, this here is your auto gen start. Um, it's already set up for you, but it's those are set up to where if you lose power, it automatically kicks the generator on and uh, keeps you from losing 110 power. And then this is your inverter controller. This here is your tank heater uh, switches. Those are really simple, just on and off. And then you have your Truma water heater controller. Uh, one notch up is constant hot water. It's constantly gonna try to produce hot water and keep it at a really hot temperature for you. Um, for the most part, you'll wanna keep it on eco though, which is the second notch up. Uh, the eco mode is really nice for doing dishes, doing laundry things like that. Uh, the other one is really nice for taking showers. If you like long showers, you'll definitely want it on the first notch there. And then you have just underneath the off mode is uh, looks like a little snowflake there. Uh, that is for if it's really cold outside, 
and you're going to be away and that'll help keep your water heater from freezing and it just keeps the temperature right above freezing now if you put it on the clean mode there you have to run i believe it's 60 gallons of water through the water heater before it'll produce hot water anymore um, it's just a clean out function just something to keep in mind if you happen to put it on clean and your hot water is not functioning properly uh, you would have to run a lot of water through there in order to get it to function properly again. So below that in the other cabinet here you have uh, your fuse panel here that's for all your 12 volt fuse fuses and then below that you have your uh, 110 breaker box uh, all your appliances, recepts, everything 110 will go through that breaker box there. Everything's labeled uh, real nice and neat. It's, you guys take a lot of pride in their electrical here. So uh, you have your residential refrigerator here. Um, really nice refrigerator. Most of them have an ice maker. I believe yours does as well. Uh, convection microwave all stainless steel uh, four burner stove oven combo that's really nice in a RV uh, you also have the wine cooler here everything's plugged in ready to go those are really nice as well and then over here is your main TV if you pull up on this lever here, it'll open up. You have storage behind here. And you can also get to hook up your, your satellite or cable or whatever you need to hook up there. Um, all the remotes will be in a black bag uh, when you receive your coach. And then there will also be a, a blue folder that'll have your order and some other information in there like your serial numbers and things like that. For uh, warranty purposes, you would need to call those serial numbers in um, to whoever they need to get called in. Uh, so the Dometic ones for the ACs would need to get called into them and things of that nature. Uh, you have the sound bar there with the Blu-ray player. Your uh, fireplace and then down beside the sofa here is a couple of light switches uh, those control the uh, the sconce lights on the wall and the overhead cabinet lights here and then for all your satellite hookup uh, you would refer to up into this cabinet uh, you'll notice there's three of them that say dish and there's only one that says DTV that one's for direct TV uh, there's also one that says sat that one is for your external satellite hookup down in the wet bay and then you have all three of the entertainments so your bedroom outside entertainment and your living room so depending on uh, which satellite you're gonna go with will depend on how you hook up uh, you're more than welcome to call us uh, when you decide what you're gonna get and we'll be more than happy to assist you on how to hook that up so if you have any other questions feel free to contact us and we'll be more than glad to answer any questions that you have